Hello, and welcome to the Over 50 Health and Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin English, founder of The Silver Edge. Our mission at The Silver Edge is to inspire men and women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond to live their strongest, healthiest, most fulfilling lives. In this podcast, we share stories of amazing individuals who are doing just that to help motivate you to become the healthiest version of yourself, regardless of your age. And now, on to today's podcast. Hello, my guest today is Dave Linton. Dave is a 52-year-old bodybuilder with an amazing transformation story. Dave, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to have you here. So certainly want to hear about your transformation story and how you got where you are in amazing shape at 52. But let's back up and start at the beginning. Tell us what were you like as a kid? Well, I was pretty active as a kid. You know, I baseball and all the sports and stuff like that. When I was in public school and all through high school, I was always involved in stuff. So I, I got I actually got my first weight set. I remember begging for it when I was like seven years old and I think it was an old York or a weeder bench and it had the bar with those plastic weights, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I was like seven years old. I think it was Christmas. I got it. And I was, I was hooked on, on lifting weights. I, I always have, it's just been a kind of a passion of mine. I like that. I'm, I like strength stuff. And, you know, that's kind of where I got started in, in the lifting. And then, you know, as time went on, you know, my dad would get tired of me always breaking those plastic weights and then they turned into steel and like metal and yeah <laughs> the collection just kept growing so yeah so I, as, as a kid I was always always active um you know I played a lot of sports but I, honestly my my biggest thing was I was always kind of into the uh sports by yourself you know like lifting or or things like that you know where it's it's you against whoever or whatever you know I I like that. Uh, I've always had that kind of competitive kind of spirit, so I, I I've always been into stuff like that. So, so more the yeah the individual sports, not so much the uh, the team sports. Yeah. So you you yeah. definitely got an early start then. If it if you were seven something years old and Christmas you yeah. you know you're you've got a weight set. You you've definitely been at it for quite some time. So. When you get into, say, uh, junior high or high school, were you still active? I'm, I'm sure you were still lifting weights. Were you doing any combat sports or wrestling or any individual sports? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, by then, um, I was still active, still lifting weights. Uh, you know, in the, in the barn at night, you know, I'd be working and making feed and stuff. And, and you know, we'd fill five-gallon buckets and we'd curl buckets and put broomsticks through them. And there was always something that we were doing. And then... And then I got into martial arts too at an early age. So, and that was a single competitor type thing too, you know. Um, that's always been my thing. And that went all through high school until when I reached my early 20s was when I hooked up with uh, a place down in Florida. I moved to Florida. And that's where I started with, uh, I originally started, it was more of a, the fellow that was there, he, he taught a lot of different shoot fighting and stuff. And so I got into that. But back in those days, it was still banned in most states. So it was very hard to 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 find somewhere to compete. So a lot of us got into pro wrestling. So I, I spent, uh, I guess, about four years or so in Florida where I just lifted weights all day and, and, and wrestled as much as I could. I lived in Florida, but I, I wrestled up as far as, I'd go up into Tennessee and then all the way across to Texas, you know, but Florida was kind of my home base. I, that's where I always, that's where I was living. So. Yeah. That sounds like quite the lifestyle then for a 20 year old. So you're you're lifting weights all day, getting big, getting jacked. Um, By by this time, I'm sure you're pretty strong, right? You've been at it for quite some time. And now when you say professional wrestling, you're referring to like the professional wrestling that we we see on TV as opposed yeah. to yeah. say Olympic type style wrestling, yeah. right? Exactly. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about, about that. What um, <laughs> kind of what goes on in, in those bouts? What's it like to, to prepare? And do you, do you get to meet your opponent beforehand or yeah. just, how does that work? I'm not very familiar with that world other than what I see, obviously what I saw as a kid on TV. Yeah. Which, um, that was the thing. Yeah. Man. Well, it's, it, it's entertainment. That's what it is. So, so, you know, you have your two, 
you have your two characters like in life, evil versus good, right? So you have your heel versus your baby face. And, and, and it depended, you know, it would depend where I was uh, or who the promoter was or what they had going. Sometimes I would be in Alabama. I played the heel a lot. I'm not sure why they always wanted me to be a bad guy, which is, that's the easiest thing to do because in order to be a baby face, if you want to be a good guy, you've got to make people love you, you know, you, so you're, you, you know, you've got to, you've got to get them up, but you can make anybody hate you. You can make absolutely anybody hates your guts. So that was always, a, that was yeah. always an easy thing, but it was, I, I had, those were amazing years. I met tons of people. I got to work out all the time, but uh, independent scene. So I wrestled for a whole bunch of different promoters and they don't want to hear from you that, Oh yeah. I, uh, the night before I, did something to my back or whatever it's you know you kind of gotta suck it up and and just go and uh so yeah you you end up with a lot of injuries that over time they they, they come back to haunt you so yeah I, I can imagine anybody who's watched professional wrestling that i mean just some of the they're so athletic and it just <laughs> i'm wincing thinking about some of the the things that you see there the guys jumping off the top of the ropes and getting body slammed this way and that thrown out of the ring. So I, I can imagine there'd be a fair amount of uh, injury to go along with that. Now, what decade is this? Would this be like eighties or what time frame is this? Uh, that'd be back in the nineties. Okay. Back in the nineties. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was interesting. There was uh there is many nights where I was such a bad guy that the local sheriff department there would ask, like literally escort me out of town because there'd be people just waiting outside. To, <laughs> That's to classic. Out. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, you know, you're playing your part well, then. I'm playing my part well, and and uh, the the promoters like that. You know, you've got a job in that town the next time, so they're because right, right. people are going to come out just to get mad at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and get them, get them riled up, right, yeah, one way yeah, or the other, for sure. And then, how does that come to an end? So you've you're doing what four or five years of wrestling? Yep, it sounded like yeah. So it's um, I was down there, you know, I I had a bunch of things I had to come home to, and and uh, so so it was it was just time to come home, and I was hoping to actually continue in Canada, but in Canada there's really no. We have some good wrestling families. We have Brett, and there was his dad Stu and Owen when he was still alive. Uh, there's some good wrestling families out of Canada, but in Canada there's not very much wrestling. So when I when I came back, it was pretty much, pretty much the end of that. So then I just got just kept lifting. So I just kept lifting, and and that was my thing. And then I actually started training people as well, and uh, that's what I ended up doing for most of the time. Was just that was my passion. So so it was, staying with I, that, yeah. yeah. Now, do you still keep up with wrestling? Are you familiar with who's who's who and who the good guys and bad guys are? And all the, um, the crazy thing is, from my days, when I was there, most guys are have passed. Uh, Davy Boy Smith, uh, he, he's related with the Hearts. There's so many guys that have passed away. And the crazy thing is, most of them have passed away from heart attacks. And that's what ended up getting me. So... You know, I was one of the fortunate ones. Well, very fortunate because I've had in total four now. So, you know, I, I've been more than lucky. But most of the guys that that were around in my day, they've all passed on now. They uh, So I, I, I actually haven't followed it a whole lot. Um, there's a lot of changes. I see a lot more women in wrestling now. It used to be where they would be a valet and they'd, they'd walk to the ring with you, you know, and you'd create some kind of scenario or whatever to get people going. And, but now there's, there's a lot of women actually they're in, they're in the ring. Yeah. And they're phenomenal athletes as well. They are, they really yeah. are. So yeah. yeah, there's a lot of changes. That's for sure. All right. So we've got your story up to now. You've um, kind of retired from wrestling, let's say, and you're, you're moving on to the next chapter. Yeah. Uh, you've alluded to your, you're going to run into some health issues here yeah. in the future. It sounds like what happens after wrestling. So you back in Canada, are you, are you yeah. I guess you're training folks. You're still, you're obviously still bodybuilding, yeah. still lifting and yeah. that sort of thing. Are you competing at this time at, at no, all? Or I, I actually have never competed. Um, okay. It was, just it was one of the things that I'd never done. So now that's my goal. Now I was supposed to this May, unfortunately, with all the stuff going on. There's every show has been canceled, and 
And, uh, you know, it was kind of upsetting because it would have been my very first show. But, you know, uh, I learned a long time ago to not kick doors down. Because, you know, I used to be bad for that when, when I was young. If a door was closed, I'd kick it down and keep going and nothing would stop me. But I've learned that a lot of times when doors close now, just wait for the next one to open and it'll be much better. So that's that's what I've done. I've gone back and just started, uh, you know, lifting again and, and more more bulking now again. And then uh, I'm looking for next May. So I'll just come in bigger, stronger, leaner. So uh, to me, I just, in my mind, I say, no, it's probably a good thing. Right. And for anybody listening out there, what we're alluding to here, what Dave's alluding to when he says there, he had a, a show and nothing's happening is we're recording this in September 2020. And so we're right in the midst of the COVID-19 yeah. pandemic. So that's, there are no shows or certainly yeah. very reduced. All right. So somewhere between now, today, preparing for a bodybuilding show and and in your bodybuilding years, you, you ran into some, some poor health there. Yeah. Yeah. So, Lead us up to that. You know, when I got back, I was working out, but you know, as, as time goes on in life and you, you, um, you have responsibilities and you're, you're doing things and you have work and you have people depending on you, you, all of a sudden your, your health actually takes a back burner, you know, which is not a good thing. There, there's a lot of people that do it, you know, um, it's very common, but what a lot of people don't realize is that you're no good to anybody else if you're not healthy. You can't help somebody else if 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 you're not in a position to do it. So, you know, it's it's a good thing to keep up with it. But like so many, I didn't. You know, just responsibilities in life. You're not getting to the gym, and and I've got a, I have a big home gym. I've got everything there. Like I didn't, I had no excuses whatsoever. And, you know, but that's life. You're not paying attention. Then all of a sudden you're not eating right. And, you know, it's, it's a slippery slope. So and that, that's what happened with me. I think my first heart attack, I, I was 36 or 37. And I just shrugged it off, you know, because in my mind, I still thought I was immortal, you know. I was still a big guy, strong. And I wasn't. You know, I wasn't going to worry about it. That's not a big deal. So when I'm trying to think what year it is now, it's almost eight years since I had had my big one. Yeah, I was actually in my basement and uh, my oldest boy was with me and I knew that something was wrong. I hadn't been feeling good in, in quite some time. Um, and there was a lot of things pointing towards trouble was coming. So. So I, I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to go down. And I got, like I said, I got a full gym in the basement, wrestling mats, squat racks. I mean, it's loaded. I have everything down there. So I went down there and we started moving stuff around because I said, you know what? I'm not, I, something's not right. I got to start working out and get, get myself back in line here. And we were literally moving a great big, huge wrestling mat. And they're, they're heavy as all get out. And uh, I grabbed hold of it in and I stood up with it. And it was literally like somebody had taken a sledgehammer with both hands just smashed me in the chest. So I sat down <laughs> and because it, it, I couldn't get my breath. And uh, I sat there for a minute. And then I said, oh, I'm going to maybe just lay down here for a second. Something's not right. So I'll just rest it off and see how that goes. And when I did, I closed my eyes. And a voice inside my head said, get up, go get an aspirin and get to the hospital. So I sat straight up and I looked at my oldest son and uh, he said, dad, I, I, I think you need, I think you need to go to the hospital. I said, yeah, that's what I'm hearing. So, so off I went and uh, yeah, by the time I got there, cause we, we live in the country. So we got to our local hospital and, and uh, they knew right away what it was. And, and um, so, but they couldn't do anything there. So they, they gave me something to, to kind of help out and then they then they ambulanced me to the one of our bigger hospitals in the city and so by the time I got there I I'd lost half my heart half it was too far gone it was damaged you know it was uh that was a hard time because when I came out of it you're still thinking you know big strong guy you know no big deal but uh it was when I finally got home, it was about two days later, and all I was doing I was I was 
splitting a little bit of kindling because we, we heated with wood. So I was splitting a little bit of kindling and, it, you know, it's just a little hatchet. Well, it, it hit me again and it was another warning, you know, and back in the hospital I went and they released me right away. They said it was, I'd stopped in time, but, but, uh, that was kind of like, okay, um, I'm in big trouble, big, big trouble. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do what I used to do anymore. And from that point, I actually slid downhill real bad. I went through seven years of, of, I mean, just eat. Um, it got to the point where I would, I would even drink just so I could sleep at night. Cause I've never been a good sleeper. A lot of my previous employments, I did a lot of private contract work and stuff. And it, um, you don't get a lot of sleep with a lot of stuff that I used to do. So, so my sleeping's really bad. And, um, so it, uh, it, it, it put me into quite a depression and then my weight went. So my weight, you know, during that, that time up until, you know, till I, I, I woke up, you know, I was, most people don't know, it, but I was up over 350 pounds and on every medication, like I, I had to get a, I had to get one of those trays so I could keep track of the, my medications. Cause there was just too many. So everything from blood pressure, different blood pressures, um, cholesterols, you know, things for anxiety and stuff because they didn't want me to have any stress. And because I wasn't sleeping, they were giving me these other ones that um, they say it's supposed to help you with sleep. However, when you look into them, they're more so for depression. And, oh, they're not. They're just terrible. They're, I believe that they actually kept me in the hole, in that dark hole, a lot longer than what I should have been. So I, I, I don't think they help you. I think they keep you down. Wow. So that's, that's quite a story. You went from being, like you said, a, a big, strong guy, right? Your whole life, you've, you've been pretty strong and capable. What was, so you mentioned that you'd kind of let yourself go a little bit. Um, and I think a lot of listeners can relate to that, right? We hit that point in our life when, yeah. you know, families, careers, et cetera, we don't take the time for self-care and your point's very well taken that when we stop with the self-care, we become less capable as providers for, you know, uh, our employers, our families, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, taking all that into account, what did you weigh when you were, say, wrestling at kind of that, that peak young man fitness? I, I, I averaged when I was wrestling, I was pretty jacked. I was averaging around 275 and, and that, that's where the 32 inch waist. I actually peaked right. at 300 one time. Okay, so three hundred at at that jacked yeah. kind of look, yeah. right? So I I got I, I'm pretty genetically I'm pretty gifted. Um, it it kind of ticks a lot of people off because when when I'm in shape and I'm and I'm and I'm on track, you know, it's I don't actually have a problem if I wanted to cheat. If I want to have something to eat, my my metabolism runs so high that I'm I'm really lucky that way, and I've always been able to. I, I can put on muscle, I can put on size just by looking at weights. Genetically, I've always been gifted that way. So, you know, so even in my transformation, I was kind of fortunate and lucky because even though I had so much weight on me and it, it was it was a good chunk, it was fat, that's what it was, I still had a base of muscle underneath there that just had been dormant for years and years. So, you know, it was, uh, you know, I, I was lucky that way. That, that I was able to do that. But um, that took a lot. That didn't happen overnight. A lot of people think that's a big thing, but that right. was, that was a, that was took some time in doing. So. Yeah. That's, that's interesting that you say, even when you were at your, at your unhealthiest, that you still had that there, there's some yeah. musculature underneath that. Right. I, I just recently read uh, a quote from a doctor, Dr. Danielle Lyon. And um, if I, let's see if I can recall this from memory, something along the lines of as Americans, as older Americans specifically, we have less of a problem with being over fat and more of a problem with being under muscled. And I think certainly that, that can, that could apply. You see a lot of, you know, if you, turn on ESPN and you look at a strongman contest, a lot of those guys don't have bodybuilder physiques. They're, they're big, yeah. they're big boys and girls. Right. Um, yeah. but they're, they're heavily muscled. So, so your, your health is really deteriorated here. You've had a, a couple of cardiac incidents. You, you mentioned the big one in yeah. 2012, I think we said it was probably that. So you've got all these drugs, your, your health is spiraling and that had to be 
I mean, that had to be devastating to yeah. you personally, right? Because you, I think you're probably your image, the way you looked at yourself is you, I've always been this big, strong guy. And here all of a sudden, you're not as healthy anymore. I've seen a few on Instagram, some of your transformation pictures, and certainly you, you, you definitely put on some weight and did not look like you do today. Talk to us about um, leading up to that uh, quote unquote big one, uh, that your, your, your last heart attack. And then yeah. what happens after that? So leading up to it was basically, you know, I, I, I had spiraled. I wasn't paying attention. And, you know, I'd let my health just just go. And which with all the injuries and, and everything that I've had in the past mounting on top of that, that was just more stress in the heart. So, you know, that's that's what ended up happening. I was that that's what led to the big one. And, you know, and then. So when I had that one and I got to the hospital and then I got to the, the bigger hospital, when they were working on me, I'd actually had another one <laughs> while I was on the table. That was actually number four. Number three was the one that did a lot of damage, but but because I'd it taken so long to get there and there was so much damage while they were working on me, that's that's I ended up having another one right on the table. And um I can remember I can remember what listen to all the bells and whistles going off, and I'm thinking, "Holy cow, <laughs> this isn't good!" And they were running around me like crazy, you know, trying to trying to get things under control. So, and then, you know, when I got home, and you know, and then I finally realized that, yeah, I'm not that guy anymore. Like it, it, it it's like that. All of a sudden, you you're not who you think you are anymore, and which, by the way, isn't true that that's actually not true that's that's what you start to think but you are still that person you just have to have the right mindset but this is what this is what i found and i know now once you have that you start meeting all kinds of people and they will tell you that life is going to change for you nothing will be the same and you start believing it you know they start saying you know this is what you're going to have to do for your diet these are the pills you're going to have to take, which changes over and over and over again. You, you end up with so many pills, it's mind-boggling. And they almost put you in that mindset where you're, you're going to start believing that you're not that same person anymore. And that happened for me for over a period of, of seven years. And at the end of that seven years, I knew I was on my way out. I knew I was getting worse and I knew the next one was coming again, the next big heart attack. And I, I knew that in the position that I was in, I wasn't going to make that one. So, and it was literally, I woke up one day and I just said to myself, I ain't going out like this. I'm not going out like this and, and I've got to change and I'm going to do something. I've, I've followed all the rules. I followed all the specialists. I followed everything everybody told me that I was supposed to do. And in the end, I was getting worse and worse and worse. So I thought, you know what? I'm smarter than that. Nowadays, we have Google. <laughs> we can start Googling stuff. We can start Googling some of these medications. And we can see, you know, some of the side effects from them and, and everything else. And we can start thinking for ourselves, okay, hold on a second. And there's nothing wrong with questioning your doctor. I think it's a good thing to do. And so I, I, I started doing a lot of that and I actually ran up against the wall because when I would start questioning, they, they would basically tell me, oh, you know, well, who's the expert and you're going to Google it, you know, type thing. So, so I got to the point where, okay, I'm not going out like this. I have to change what I'm doing. I'm going to run into a wall with these people. So I'm just going to have to keep it to myself. And that's what I did. Uh, my oldest boy, he's, he's with the military. And, uh, so he said, he said, dad, he said, why don't you come with me? And on the base they have, uh, I mean, it's an absolutely amazing gym. I mean, they've got the top of everything. And, uh, so I thought about it and I thought, yeah, that's what I need to do. If I'm going to do this, I need to change my environment. I need to change my thinking. You know, we're we're kind of like chameleons, right? We we take on our environment, and and it's it's not a good thing. So I said, yeah, that's what I gotta do. I gotta I gotta get out and change everything. So I went with him, and I spent two months where that's all I did. I just focused on that, and um, I started slowly, slowly weaning myself off of medications. Um, I started with the mind ones first, and 
I just kept going, kept going. At the end of that two months, I when I went out there, I was over 350. When I came home, I was just over 245. And that was in two months. And when I first got there, I couldn't do 10 minutes on the treadmill. My knees, my knees actually wasn't taken anymore. I couldn't take it with that much weight. And my knees, just from injuries over the years and stuff, they weren't holding me anymore. So I had to, I had to, I had to swallow a lot of pride because here I am, I'm out in a gym now filled with military guys, all in good shape. You know, I'm thinking, man, I remember those days. And now here I am, I'm the, the big heavy guy on the treadmill. I can't do 10 minutes and, and, uh, you know, like I, I had to, I had to swallow a lot of pride and say, listen, this is going to be a big, big adjustment. And, uh, I just kept doing it. I didn't stop, you know? And so I changed my diet. I went completely against what all the specialists say. I did two months of keto and I, I did very, very strict keto. You know, I wasn't one of those guys. I'll just eat bacon all the time and this and that. No, I actually watched my calories, watched my fat intake, and I didn't waver from it one bit. So I, I really watched my diet, kept my workouts in line. And so in that two months, not only did I drop the weight, but I was actually able to, the most important thing was, was I was able to actually find myself again. I was able to, to remember who I was, find that person and keep driving forward. And that was, that was the big thing, but I, I needed to change my environment. I had to get out of everything. I had to do that. So, and then when I got home, my mind was set again. It was straight. It was clear. And then I was able to just keep going and, and, you know, that's, that's about a little over two years ago now. So, yeah, that's, that's quite the story. Um, I, I, I suspect there are several things there. Like you said, you, you found yourself again, clearly probably weaning yourself off of some of those, um, some of the drugs. I'm, I'm sure that probably had a, had your brain in a bit of a cloud there, the diet, the, the working out and working back up to things. And yeah, that, that's great that you had the opportunity to just completely get out of your environment, get into a, a healthy environment where you could just focus on yourself, focus on your health. And so you spent that time there, started working out, started finding your strength again, got your body composition in check. So what, what happens after that? So now you're, you're off some or most of your drugs, I suppose. I am actually off of 100% of them. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's, I mean, we hear stories over and over again of people who are taking their health into their own hands and are yep. doing this, you know, Dr. Jonathan Sullivan calls it the barbell prescription. They're taking that prescription dosing it daily because yeah. that's what you have to do. Yep. And um, they are, they're finding their health and reclaiming their health. I think that's, that's fantastic. So hundred percent off, off of the drugs. And obviously you're looking pretty jacked these days. Like you said, you're getting ready for a, a, a bodybuilding show. So yeah, talk us through that time. Now you've, you've spent some time on, on the base. You've kind of dialed in your nutrition, dialed in your workouts. How do you get from there to finding yourself off your drugs? And what made you decide to do a bodybuilding show? Well, I got back. So I got back from there and I stayed on track. I, I, I knew who I was again and I just stayed on track. So when I got back, keto for me, I knew wasn't going to be sustainable, not for a long period. So I knew I needed to adjust my diet again. So I spent, I spent just as much time. I spent pretty much two months again, slowly bringing carbs back in. Cause I, I have found with a lot of people that, that, that do keto they have a really good success rate, and then all of a sudden, bang, they bring the cars back in, and they, they can't figure out why they ballooned again. So I did it over a two-month period. I, I needed to get that energy. I needed that carb source back in. And so I did that, and now my diet is my diet is, is pretty much like it's – I've got fats. I've got carbs. i got my proteins. I, I focus on my, my micronutrients as well, you know with my greens and stuff. I think that's one thing a lot of people overlook. They just think about their macros and not their micros. So, so I, I, I got my diet in check because in all honesty, I tell people that 90% of my success rate was diet. You, you've got to have, you've got to, you've got to have the right diet. Our bodies are like machines and you got to fuel them properly. 
And, you know, everybody says, oh, you know, you spend all this time in the gym. Well, I can go in and do my workout. If I was by myself, I could go in and do my workout in 40 minutes. I'm in and out. And I can do that four times a week. Right now I'm bulking. So so I will smash the weights as hard as possible. And, and then I get out and I rest. I let my body recuperate. And I don't hit that muscle group again until the next week. Yeah. So, but in the meantime, so that 40 minutes, everybody thinks, oh, you spend all that time in the gym. I actually don't spend that much time in the gym. Where I spend the most time is in the kitchen. You know, I'm eating six, seven times a day. I spend hours food prepping. I spend hours every day just eating, just eating. I spend more time doing that than in the gym. Way, way more time. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, I think a lot of our, our listeners might not realize that. I, I know there's a popular meme. There's a, a big guy and he's grunting and he's, I think he's doing a bench press or something. It says what people thinks is hard and it has that picture, right? The big guy doing a, a bench press and says what's actually hard. And what it shows is a kitchen with 20 Tupperwares laid out all with yeah. the food prep going in there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and I just wanted to uh, refer back. You had mentioned... um that you're watching your macros and, and micros. So folks listening, if they're not really sure what that is, macronutrients are your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates. And then your micronutrients would be all your vitamins, minerals, things of that nature. So certainly that being a, a real key there. And uh, I'm glad you brought up diet being, I think you said you attributed like 90% of your, your success to that. That's, I think yeah. that's lost on a lot of folks as well. So not everybody listening is going to know what's involved when you say bulking. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think most people probably get a general idea of what you're talking about, but talk about bulking, what the idea of bulking is, and then kind of what happens after that, right? As you come closer to, yeah. to showtime. So right now in a bulking phase, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to put on some, some more muscle. I want to gain more muscle. And in order to do that, the most important things are going to be food. You've got to feed it so that muscle can can get what it needs. It's going to be rest because you need recovery time for for that muscle to heal before you before you hit it again. And another really really important thing is, and a lot of people miss out on is water. You need water. So like right now, I'm I'm averaging between five and six liters a day, and I'm keeping them muscles full of water. And I'm giving them the rest and I'm giving them lots of food. And that's, that's bulking because right now I'm trying to gain as much muscle as I can because probably in January, or February, when that comes around, then I'm going to start my pre-contest. I'm going to start, start cutting because when you bulk, you tend to gain, you tend to put on a little fat. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard because you're taking in an excess of calories. You're trying to feed as much as you can. You don't want to keep too much away that your muscle doesn't get what it needs. So you tend to be in a little excess. Um, I've actually been pretty lucky this time because I, I the weirdest thing is 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 I can feel my strength's gone up and I I'm gaining size, but I'm actually staying fairly lean. I think I found that happy medium, which is very very hard to do. A lot a lot of people have the problem of as they gain that weight, they put on proportional fat to yeah to and then they have all that fat they've got to lose to, to like you said to cut back down. So the the trick there is to find that, like you said, that happy medium where you're you're giving your muscles enough calories that they can grow. Yeah. But but you're not really not so much that you're storing excess as fat, right? Yeah. So that's that's a pretty tricky yeah. balancing act. Because then you're gonna when come pre contest time, then you're gonna have just way too much cardio. <laughs> you're gonna have to do a lot of cardio. You're gonna have to. You got to burn that fat off, and then you got to find the happy medium again because you got to get your calories to a point where you're not losing muscle. You right. just want to be losing fat. So it's kind of a it's a real juggle. Sometimes you have to really be careful. And and again, it all comes down to diet. The diet is gonna be yep. the number one thing. So, and then pre-contest time, you're going to have a lot more cardio because you've got to, you got to burn that fat off that you've gained through your bulk and you want to show up on stage as, as lean as you can showing the most muscle that you can. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a, almost like a constant little battle, but I like that, that see for me, I've never competed in bodybuilding. So when I got back into shape and I started working out like nonstop, for me, I've always had that competitive edge. 
So I, 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 I needed a goal. And there was a young fella in our gym. Uh, his name's Jeremy. And um, he's, he's, had, he's competed three times now. So anyways, I went in there the one day. And uh, he was all excited. He was telling me about his competition and stuff like that. And I went home that night and I thought, that's what I need to do. That's my new goal. You know, and, and a lot of people laugh. They said, come on, you're, you're 50 years old now. What, you're going to be a bodybuilder? And, and, and that actually drove me harder. <laughs> so, so anyways, I went back the next day and I said to him, I said, listen, I said, I was thinking about what you told me and uh, I'm going to compete. I said, tell me when there's a show. I'm going to, I'm going to compete in. That's what I'm going to do. And he was all excited. And, uh, because, um, little did I know he'd been watching me for, for quite some time and he'd been wanting to train with me. He'd been wanting to work out. And, um, uh, I hadn't had a workout partner in the last time I had one was when I lived in Florida in my early twenties. Because when you have a training partner, you got to click there. There's just something there. And so, I thought about it. He said, listen, if, if, if we train together, if you let me train with you, he goes, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll show you what poses you need to do, and I'll help you out with your, with your pre-contest, and we can work together. And I thought, well, he's already been there. He's done that. So that's a fair trade. So, so I went with it, and we've been working out together ever since. There's 30 years between us. Uh, well, a little more. Was, right, Jeremy's yeah. 21, and, and I'm – that's I'm great. 52, and we actually have another younger guy, uh, young Bryce. He's 16, and this kid's got the heart of a lion. He's lifting weights like you wouldn't believe, and it's just it's awesome, you know. So, but nice. that's kind of part of your environment that I was telling you about too. You need to, you need to change your environment. You need to surround yourself with people who have one the same work ethic, uh, the same drive, the same goals, and and when you do that. That's when you're going to succeed. You, you have to you have to surround yourself with that type. So and it, it's worked out. It's worked out awesome. And that that's that's where I ended up getting ready for this bodybuilding competition. And I was super excited for it. You know, it was supposed to be this May uh, May ninth. It was in London, Ontario. And of course, with everything that happened, you know, every show was canceled. And and uh, but that's okay. We'll come in next May, bigger and stronger and leaner. There you go. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So had you already started, con I'm guessing I you did. probably had started prepping your cut I for the did. show, right, um, for yeah, the May show this year. Yeah, very disappointing because oh, I'd never done a pre-contest. So, I mean, the dieting, I mean, it was, it was super strict. And uh, I remember oh, I was about, I was about two months in and uh, Jeremy said, hey, he said, we have leg day tomorrow, so when you come, he said, stop by. There's a bakery just right by the gym. He said, stop there, and he said, you can get whatever big cupcake that you want. And I hadn't had anything, no sugar, no nothing. I avoid sugar like crazy. And I was I was saying to myself, holy cow, you know. <laughs> so I'd had this cupcake before legs, and uh, I, I tell you, it was delicious. But, boy, I paid for it because when you eat so good and you eat so clean, and then all of a sudden you you push sugar in your body like that. Wow, that's an eye opener. It tells you how much yeah. sugar can really put you in the spin. Jack yeah. you up. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah I was in my pre contest. Oh man. So how many how many calories a day are you eating right now? Uh, so roughly. Right now I'm at about forty two hundred. Okay, so that's that's not crazy, but that's still yeah. that's a lot of food um, for anybody out there that, yeah. that counts calories. That's that's yeah. quite a bit of quite a bit of food to eat. And you said you're you're doing that in what five six meals uh, a day, closer to like six. That? Yeah, it's it's pretty much six. There's the odd time there'll be seven. Um, like if I have um, like leg days, I'll I'll, ha I'll actually have a little more, and I'll have a little more carbs on those days too. So, but that seems to be the magic number for me right now. Like my partner Jeremy, uh, he's at five thousand. And, you know, I, I've done that before, but, um, I find that I, I tend to, it's a little, little excessive for me. I, I'm kind of at that happy medium right now. So, so I'm going to keep it around 4,200 and, and then on, like I said, leg day, I'm probably closer to 4,400 and, uh, yeah, that just works. That works for me. And I spread it all out, spread it out to the nice. day. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about what a typical workout week 
looks like for you? What is a week? I think you had mentioned that you do kind of body, uh, yep. body parts per day of the week, but what, yeah, what is a typical day? Yeah. How many days a week you work out? Well, right now uh, we're doing four days a week because we're trying to, we're trying to bulk and we're trying to get as much rest as we can for that muscle. So we, we work out on Sundays. So Sunday is uh Sunday is a back day for us. It's a, it's it's all pull muscles. So it's a heavy heavy back day. We we'll, we'll be doing, you know, we do rack pulls, you know, we do pull downs. Uh at our gym we have a lot of hammer strength equipment, which is really awesome for isolating. Um and pretty much everything we do right now is is pretty heavy. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. I do I do watch myself. I like when I was younger, you know, in my early 20s, I was doing 800 pound deadlifts. I don't even attempt to do stuff like that now, simply because I've had two broken backs, and um, you know I have found that I can build muscle pretty good without having to do that heavy, heavy lifting. And it's and for me too. The other thing is, like I love this. I love what I'm doing, but it's also for longevity. I want to be doing this for a long time. Yeah. So right. And maybe those giant one rep maxes and just make sure I didn't, I didn't miss that. Cause you said it really quick. Did you say 800 pound deadlifts? I used to. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, was, man, that's, I, that's I think, legit pulling now. I think my best was like 807. So, wow. Yeah. And I, and I used to, I used to do reps with, with seven. So, it, you know, I don't, I don't even attempt that kind of craziness. Anymore. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. That's more of a young man's game, right? Like this past Sunday, we were doing rack pulls and we were up in the 500s, you know. Mm-hmm. So we're we're, lift, we're lifting pretty heavy weight, but it's a weight that I, I'm comfortable with. And I'm not feeling it in my joints. My joints are strong enough. My back's yeah. strong enough. And, you know, of course, always good form. You, you've got to yep. use good yep. form. I get scared when I see people in the gym and they're doing stuff and they their backs are arched like a cat and they're trying to, it's like, oh, it's I know, I know what that pain is going to be like when it finally goes. <laughs> right, right. So, All right, so we we started with I guess Sunday's kind of back day, yep. right? And then what what's the rest yeah. of the week kind of so look like? Sunday's back day, and uh, we do um, yeah. So we hit the back, we hit the rear delts, traps, and lower back, and then um, so then we have a day off. So Monday we're off, and then Tuesday we come back, and then we're, we're smashing chest. So we're hitting chest. We're hitting front delts. Um, we're hitting all of our push muscles except for our arms, and then um, and that's a heavy day too. That'll involve it'll involve uh, well. Sometimes we do flat. We don't really do a whole lot of flat benching, is it's really not the best for 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 development. We'll we'll do a lot of inclines, um, dips. Dips are awesome. You know, we'll do dips mm-hmm. and we'll throw a forty five plate in between our legs and. And wrap them out, you know, cables for to get that striation in the chest and and things like that. So that that's that'll be our chest day Tuesday, and then uh, and then Wednesday is our leg day. And everybody that knows me knows I I can't stand doing legs. I absolutely hate doing legs, and th- the main reason is is man they 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 wear you out. You do legs and you do them right. You you should be you should be real tired when you're done. And, and that's, and so that's leg day for me. And, but the key thing is I don't skip leg day. I've never been one to skip leg day. Cause I know the importance of it. I know by doing legs, my other lifts increased. My deadlifts would always increase. Even my, my benching, every, everything always increases when you do legs. It's a, it's a weird thing. They, everything kind of goes hand in hand. So I, I never skip it. And uh, leg days, of course, always there's squats. We have squats. We have leg extensions. Uh, we'll do leg press. So a lot of times we'll do uh, we'll do squats, and then we'll hop on a leg press, and uh, and then basically we're we're just burning them out then. And then um, and then we do leg extensions, and then we hit our hamstrings too. So we'll do usually we'll do uh, stiff legged uh, deadlifts, and then we'll do we have a seated uh, a seated leg curl machine. It's awesome. I love that. We have a lay down one too. We'll use it once in a while, but the seated one is really nice. So we'll hit the hamstrings and uh, and then of course calves. Always hit the calves. So many people neglect the calves, but we'll hit, mm-hmm. uh, we'll do two or three, some seated, some standing, 
calf raises. And, and then quite often at the end, we'll just, we'll grab one of the big 45 pound bars and throw a 45 on each side. So you got 135 and our gym, oh, it's, you know, it's a good 200 feet in the one area and we'll just lunge all the way down and then back and then swap out. And we'll do, we'll do that till we can't, you know, your butt's so sore, you can't even feel it anymore. And your legs are just shaking and, and that'll pretty much end our leg day. Oof, yeah, I'd, I'd say that, that should yeah, do it. It, it. it works. I, I, I yeah. make the mistake every once in a while. I have a, I have a Harley and I'll take the bike to the gym and uh, it's a bad mistake on leg day because you get on the bike, <laughs> you can't even hardly hold yourself up and it's always a mistake, but, but you know, you've done leg day well when it's a little wobbly right. on the bike. <laughs> right. Right. Yep. So, and then and what and comes then, after. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. So that's, that's Wednesday. And then Thursday we're off. We take another day off. Now on my days off, I, I always do at least 30 minutes of walking. So I try to do 30 minutes of walking every day. Um, I, I just, I really enjoy walking on uh, this time of year when it's still nice out, you know, we're not covered in snow here. It's nice to get out and walk and just put some music on and, and it just it's good for the mind and uh, get gets the body going. So the, I do that. I try to do that every day. Um, and on my days off, I definitely don't miss it. And then Friday, Friday's my fun day. Friday we do arms. You know, it's the last day uh, of the week and we hit the biceps and we hit the triceps. We usually start with the triceps and we'll do like some close bench close grip bench press and then we'll hit the cables and do pull downs and and then we'll do some supersets with it too and we just burn it out to where you, you can't feel your triceps anymore they're just like jello and then and then we hit the and then we hit the biceps and it's biceps are pretty much always the same you know curls we we do we'll use the cables as well we'll use the cables we'll take a a, a seated bench and we'll put it in front of the uh, cable machine so that you got to reach way back. You're stretching way back, and it stretches the biceps right out. And then we'll use the fat grips, so your hands are your hands are open a lot more, and it just puts a lot more pressure on. It. And then uh, we'll do like supersets with that, and you know, because the cables you got that like it's all about time under tension. So the more time you've got that muscle under tension, the more you're going to get out of it. And with the cables, it's right from the get go. You know, where is if you're curling a barbell or a dumbbell, yeah, when you first start, you're feeling it. But once you get it up to a certain point, it, the bicep's not the one really that's working as much anymore. But with, with cables, you've got it all the time. So, and then that's, that's Friday. We hit arms and then Saturday we're off again. <laughs> so that's, that's four days a week, right? So like you said, to your point, you're, you may be spending four or five hours at yep. the gym, right? And, and yeah, total working total, out. Yeah. As we listen to you describe that, this is intense yeah. working out. You're not, you're getting the work done, but um, really the the bulk of the work is going to be then. And you're obviously the diet yeah. and the the counting the macros, watching yeah. the micros. Um, you a little little bit to recovery. So kind of talk to a little bit if you're you're putting that kind of intensity in, um, you're spending all that time and attention on on yeah. the diet. What are you doing for recovery to make sure that when it's time to hit that body part again, that yeah. you're fully recovered? So you need the food. And then, and then once it's fed, then it, it needs rest, you know, cause that's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're basically tearing that muscle, you're tearing it up and it needs to heal. And so it needs time to heal. And it, it, you know, so you need good sleep, you need rest, which that's one of my biggest things I have, I have a problem with, but, uh, so you, you need rest, you need sleep and you need to just let that muscle be. You need to let it relax and 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 just do its thing and and heal so that when you go to hit it the next time, it's healed and it's ready to go and you should be stronger. You, you should. You, yeah, yeah, that's that's the whole idea, right? Yeah. You tear it down and it comes yeah, back a little right. bit stronger. Yeah. So and it's it's really important to you need that rest. You got to have that rest. Yeah, I, and I wholeheartedly agree. Um, especially as we get older, right? We don't recover the same way as probably back in your wrestling yep. days um, when you're banging yourself up pretty good. Your your body just has that ability to to recover pretty quickly. As we get a little older, got to pay a little more down. attention to that that self care yeah, and that resting. It slows down, Damn. and that's why uh, one of the things that we do. And I think I think there's a lot of people slowly starting to do this, but usually about every usually at the end of about every third month, we'll do a deload week. And basically what that is, is we'll take a whole week where 
we do nothing but go for a walk. Like we let the body completely heal. We don't do anything for a whole week. You you just let it heal and do its thing. Uh, we've been doing that for a little while now. And every time that we've done that, when we've come back, oh, the lifts are just, I mean, the, the strength, everything, um, you're less joint pain, less everything. You just, you're a whole new person. So those those deload weeks they they pay off. They're 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 awesome. I think with that kind of that's I guess you're alluding to kind of the periodization effect there, where you're progressively overloading yep. over a number of weeks or, or months, whatever that is, whatever that period is. And at some point, you just your body can't just keep going heavier, 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 more, more, yeah. more, whatever that is. And it's you got to just kind of get that little reset. And to your point, when when you do that and you do that appropriately, you come back. Yeah. Feeling really good, really healthy yeah, you and are. you're stronger, right? I mean, you just, over that week, your body has had that time yeah. to, to recoup and to, yeah. it's ready to go again. And I, I think it probably re- recharges it the mind a little bit as well, right? To kind of just take a, a break from the grind. Yeah. It, it recharges the mind, but here's the funny thing is for myself, I know it's worth it. Um, it it's awesome to do it, but it's actually kind of tough sometimes because you get in such a groove where you like, I, I, I hate not going to the gym. I've got to go to the gym because you, you get in that mindset and it's, I got to lift, right? So you take a whole week, <laughs> you're not, you're not lifting. You're not doing anything. Something doesn't feel right. It yeah. doesn't feel right. Yeah. You're, you're not, you're, you're out of sorts. You don't feel like the same person anymore. You will when you get back, but it's, a, it, it can be a tough, it can be a tough week. Sometimes I have to really wrestle with it that uh, I make sure I don't touch anything or doing just, just go for my walks. That's it. Yeah. Any. <laughs> yeah. Just take it easy. That's your job that week. Yeah. yeah. So, well, Davis, we're wrapping up here. I was going to ask, what's next for you? Obviously, we know you you're looking forward to next May yep. uh, for your first bodybuilding show, and I, I think that's is it fair to say that's pretty much where your attention is yep. right now in terms of your health and wellness, yep. and all that. That's kind of looking forward to that. What would you say to somebody who who hears this podcast or or maybe finds you on Instagram? Uh, who's had some serious health difficulties. Yep. And, and let's just say this is a bigger guy, right? And in his 50s, um, maybe he was active once upon a time, maybe a high school or college football player, let's just say, but has really let themselves go. What kind of advice would you have for that sort of a person to take charge of their health and to get back into, like you said, into into finding themselves yeah. into, into finding that kind of younger, more vital person that's within them? Yeah, actually, I... I um. You know, uh, my, my, my kids actually got me started in Instagram. They said, oh, Dad, you need to do this. So so I did, and I had no idea it was going to take off the way it did. I, I've actually been stunned. And and there's some crazy things on social media. That, I mean, dry, they just drive me crazy. But on the good side of it, I actually had a fellow. I was sitting there one day, and my and my phone went off. And this guy had reached out to me. And he was, I think he was the same age as me. I'm pretty sure he was right around the same age. And uh, anyways, he reached out to me and he said, Hey, I've been, I've seen your Instagram here and blah, blah, blah. Do you have time to talk? So I started, I started messaging him. He was actually in the recovery room at the hospital. He had just had a heart attack and his kids brought him his phone and he just happened to be going through and he found me. And uh, to this day, I'm still, I'm still talking with that guy. And he, he said, I, he goes, I, I, I've seen your transformation. I've seen this and that and, and what's happened. He says, I, I've gone through, I've read all your stuff. And he said, I, he goes, I'm the same. He goes, I'm not, this, this isn't going to keep me down. And I, I think the biggest thing that you have to do is, is like I said, find yourself like-minded people. So if you find yourself in a situation, find somebody who's been there and it's got out and then start listening. And start doing, you know, uh, change your environment. You, you, you got to change everything. You got to get back to who who you were. Or, or maybe you weren't even that person. You might have been unhealthy all your life. You never know. Uh, right. Somebody could be. Yeah. Yeah. So if you know that you need to change, find somebody who's been there and done that. And, you know, a lot of times it could be just somebody in your local gym. You know, you, you've got to reach out and 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 get in touch and start learning. There's a lot of stuff to learn. Uh, you know, like uh, I, I have found that in talking with people, it's amazing how many people do not when they when they take some food, 
and they look at the nutrition label, they don't know what they're looking at. They don't, it's mumbo jumbo to them. Like you need to educate yourself. And, and so educate yourself, surround yourself with like-minded people who have the same goals and set yourself a goal, you know, set yourself a goal. And when you reach that goal, then it's time to set another one and keep going and keep going. Like never stop, never quit and never any excuses. There's no time for excuses because, you know, if it comes down to it in the end and all of a sudden, you know, you're not going to say on your last day, like <laughs> those excuses are not going to mean anything to you then. All those excuses you had the years before, they're not going to mean anything to you then. You're going to wish that you hadn't had them. So, you know, you just got to get out there. And, and, you know, if there's anybody out there, I I talk to people all the time. I love doing it. I think that's one of the biggest things that I've enjoyed with, with this whole social media thing is I've met tons of people who have been in the same boat, you know, that, you know, it, it's awesome hearing from them. I have people messaging me all the time for advice and diet and what I'm doing for my workouts and stuff. And, and I just, I just tell them, I tell them what I'm doing and hopefully they're, they're doing the same thing and hopefully they're finding somebody or or somebody local for them that they can, you know, continue on. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of been the, the only good thing about social media. (laughs) And I've met met you through social media. Um, I did, uh, I did that health summit a couple weeks ago, uh, with, with, uh, Ted Hannick. He, he, he reached out to me through, through Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty much all I do. I do have a Facebook, but I keep, it's pretty much just family and real close friends, but my Instagram is, is wide open. Anybody can reach me on it. And, um, yeah, if you're having questions about what to do, I don't have a problem with answering questions and. There's there's lots of people out there that can also help you too. Find find a local gym, find you know somebody out there, and um, yeah, just go for it. That's the great thing about today. You know, we can Google stuff, we can we can research, and we can we can find what we need. You know, I'm kind of in the same boat with you with the the social media. I'm, I'm fairly new at all that as well. Yeah. But there's as much nonsense as there is out there. There's a lot of really solid people, information. Um, there's just so much information out there. that's all there at your fingertips. So those are obviously really good points, pointers you gave there. You got to change your environment. Um, you got to find some like-minded yeah. people, maybe find a mentor. That's an awesome know, idea. Somebody who's been there, done yeah. that. A What's mentor that? is an awesome yeah. idea. Somebody you can be accountable it, it, to. Get yourself educated. I, I find that really right. Oh, that's another thing yeah. too. If yeah. you can find somebody yeah. that you can be accountable to, and, and it's just, it just a good thing. It's a good thing that you can, somebody you can, you know, it can be a mentor and somebody you're accountable to and it, you, you just, you just stick to it. Right. And, and I think that's a good thing. I, I agree wholeheartedly. It is. Yeah. That, and I think that goes hand in hand with, you, you mentioned setting a goal and when you reach that, yep. set another goal. It, I find that it kind of helps motivate you, right? If you have something on the schedule, cause motivation comes yep. and goes and it's pretty fickle, right? But to have that discipline, to get that grind, to do that work, having that goal, knowing that, okay, I, in May, I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, in your case, I'm going to step out on yeah. the stage and, uh, you know, I'm, th- that's it. It's, that's, that's show day. So, um, lots of, lots of great, great advice there. Well, Dave, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to to talk with me today. You're a fantastic inspiration for, for healthy aging. You've got a great, great story. Really love hearing a transformation stories, but B, especially people that have taken their health into their own hands and have made drastic improvements. So certainly wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors. And thanks again for being on the show. Appreciate it. Well, that's our show for today, folks. If you enjoyed today's episode, please tell your friends and please consider subscribing and giving us a five-star review. All the show notes and much more are available at our website at silver-edge.com. That's silver-edge.com. So until next time, stay strong.